I would like to ask this question. Do you think it's essential to Islam that um, animals should be slaughtered by the halal method? Or do you think it's just arisen from the uh, conditions of the Middle East when there was no refrigeration? I'll explain that. <coughs> you see, the question uh, again has to be explained, the question itself has to be explained first. I'm, I'm going to do it for you. <laughs> you see, when you hear our halal and haram much talked about in a society like the British society, and when you hear the edicts of some mullahs that uh, do not eat any meat slaughtered by non-Muslims, then you have an image of what Islam is all about, and uh, perhaps you un understand Islam to be dividing a line between people of Islam and others in areas of daily common usage which are common. Now this is not the correct understanding of, of Islam. Islam clearly lays down uh, the, those things which are forbidden for human consumption. And among those things are, which are counted in the Quran are the flesh of swine, those animals which died a natural death, those who died out of an accident, those who were strangled to death, and all such animals who were slaughtered with the name of anyone else, than uh, animal other than Allah. So if they were slaughtered to the altar of some imaginary gods, then that flesh becomes positively haram for Muslims. In all the cases, rest, rest of, in, in the rest of the cases, also those animals which are birds or animals of prey, which eat other animals' flesh, they are also forbidden in Islam and you can't eat their flesh. Apart from that, the Holy Quran says the food of the Jews and the Christians alike, Al Kitab, is halal for you. I don't know why the Mullahs shut their eyes to this verse. Because the way they understand the Quran, this verse has nothing to do in the Quran. Why should it be there? It's a very broad minded teaching. It says of all Ahl Kitab, and this again is a very interesting point raised by the Quran because Ahli Kitab are generally confined to the followers of Moses and Jesus Christ and those who stood in between. But the literal term Ahli Kitab applies to all religions which uh, were founded on a divine book. So as such I believe that the Hindus who do not indulge in idolatry, they should also be treated as Ahl Kitab because they are founded on the book of Krishna whom we understand to be a law-bearing prophet. So with this understanding I assure you that this is the Ahmadiyya belief and practice that all meat is halal provided it is slaughtered for the sake of human consumption. It is slaughtered in a manner whereby blood is let because blood is haram, not the flesh. If it is not strangulated, if it is not beaten to death, then that flesh of the animal, which animal in itself is not forbidden, that can be eaten without any shadow of doubt. Only what you have to do is say Bismillah, Allah Akbar before you eat the flesh. Now this is not only my interpretation of the Quran, this, this is proved to be the practice, the Sunnah of Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself because we read in Bukhari, no other book than Bukhari, it is the most authentic book of traditions that Hazrat Rasulullah Sallam told some others who were doubtful about the quality of meat which they received from the Bedouins around. 
whether it was properly slaughtered or not, or whether it was slaughtered by Muslims or others, Muhammad Sallallahu said, no, don't indulge in doubts and uh, speculations. If a meat comes, it is slaughtered for human purpose, then say your own Bismillah over it. And Bismillah, Allah Akbar, doesn't cost anybody anything. It just means, in the name of Allah, and Allah is the greatest. So, this is the true uh, nature of Islamic injunction regarding uh, 